Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from Stream. Uh, we have the CTO and co-founder of the company, Steve Wilkes. Steve, welcome to the show today. It's great to be here, Rich. Well, well thank, thanks for coming on, Steve. You know, I was looking at your bio and I see we have something in common. We both worked for companies that were acquired by Oracle in the past. Um, yours being in the area of data analytics, of course. But uh, Steve, why don't we start at the beginning? Can you tell me about the problem that you were trying to solve when you co-founded uh, Stream? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, being acquired by Oracle doesn't really narrow it down too much. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the the four of us that founded Stream, we uh, were all uh, executives at Golden Gate, and Golden Gate was, as you say, acquired by Oracle in two thousand nine. And the business of Golden Gate was really um, moving data from one database to another uh, at a high speed way to enable these high availability solutions, etc. And it was you know very innovative in, in, in what it actually did. But the customers would ask us uh, at Golden Gate, you know, if you're moving this data, can we kind of look at it while it's moving? Can it be analyzed? Can we get value out of it? You know, rather than just after it's landed somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, so that kind of stuck in our minds. And when we were thinking about what we wanted to do next, um, kind of late 2011, that kind of idea resurfaced. And so the whole goal of Stream was to enable organizations with a, a to use a single platform uh, to be able to get value out of high-speed real-time data um, and not limited to collecting you know, change data from databases like Golden Gate, but any data that is created um, at high speed, being able to kind of get that in real time and kind of work with it. So you know, the goal of the, the company was we wanted to build a platform that enabled you to collect data as it was being created, to be able to process that data in memory, to be able to integrate it with other data, deliver it to whatever targets you wanted, and to be able to do analytics on it and kind of visualize results of those analytics. You know, so rather than customers having to use multiple products and try and piece them together or build stuff from open source building blocks and piece all that together to give them everything they needed out of the box in one platform to be able to do that. And that's what we set out to do and that's what we've actually achieved with Stream. Well, that's great, Steve. You know, I, I love this, the slogan you guys are using, you know, getting value from the data you know, w when it's born, right? And uh, not sometime later, right? So uh, that's right. Yeah. So, so Steve, I've brought your slides up. Why don't we go through the deck and uh, we'll do a Q&A uh, at the end. Awesome. That sounds great, Rich. So t today I'm going to be talking about our uh, latest 3.8 release. But in order to give you some context behind that, I'll first start off by introducing you to Stream and kind of talking about uh, the platform in general, then go through the release, what the main features and benefits are, and then kind of how you can kind of get started with Stream. So as, as I mentioned, the four of us that founded Stream, we were with Golden Gate for the acquisition with Oracle, and we founded Stream in 2012. It's backed by some really great investors. And we have customers in most industries, and, and that obviously is continually growing. Uh, it's the nature of kind of uh, integration software. Um, and the space that we're in is really to provide streaming integration platform that has this added intelligence and analytics on top of it. Um, and that software is, is something that's generally useful and is used by, as I say, customers in most industries. So you know, what is kind of streaming integration? Well, it's all about continuously moving any enterprise data you know, from wherever it's created to wherever it's delivered, um, but while also being able to handle you know, large volumes of data uh, at scale, so be able to scale out um, and handle really high throughput, but to be able to process and analyze that data in flight, in memory, um, as it's moving, to be able to correlate it together and it's all to be able to get value out of it. So to get the, make that data valuable and to have a process that is verifiable so you can kind of trust the results the data's given you and, and to visualize it, to be able to have dashboards that uh, give you visibility into your data uh, in real time, not tomorrow, not at the end of day, but as the data is being created, you can get value out of it immediately. 
So, you know, some of the, the uses of kind of this streaming integration and, and analytics you know, across all industries, somewhat around the notion of uh, technology adoption um, and data modernization, but then also obtaining that value and doing next generation real-time analytics, real-time alerting. You know, so we have uh, customers, for example, that have adopted Kafka, uh, adopted Hadoop, um, and need to be able to feed that continuously to have real-time information in Kafka and Hadoop. And that information could be coming from databases. You know, so part of what we provide within our platform is change data capture that enables you to see inserts, updates, and deletes uh, on databases as they're happening and to push that out uh, in real time. For example, on Kafka, so you have this distribution bus. Other uh, customers of ours are pushing real-time security data out onto Kafka. We have other customers that are using us to adopt cloud technologies, and that could be cloud databases, it could be cloud storage, it could be uh, cloud data warehouses, or even message buses. There are other customers that are like, expanding their uh, database infrastructure, so be able to create reporting instances or you know, read-only instances um, in real time and keep those up to date. So it, it you know, really varies. You know, streaming integration is a kind of very useful uh, technology um, that has a lot of different use cases associated with it. And so the platform itself starts off with continuous data collection. And that means being able to kind of get to data as soon as it's born. And with some data, it's already kind of pushed to you. You know, sensors might push you data. If you're utilizing Kafka or a message bus, it can push you data. So those things are already inherently event-driven. But then other things like um, log files, for example, uh, reading log files, a lot of people will just ship them to Hadoop and then read them, analyze them afterwards. But if you have adapters like ours that read at the end of the file, you can stream that out in real time. So as new entries are written to the log, you stream it out. And similarly with databases, instead of doing SQL statements against a database, you use change data capture and you see all these inserts, updates and deletes in real time as they're happening. So this continuous data collection, independent of the source, is the, the fundamental number one thing that you have to do in order to get streaming integration. And so you know, we talk about streaming first. This is streaming first. You need to, you can't have a streaming technology, a real time infrastructure, unless you can get to your data as it's being created, wherever it's created. So once you have uh, real time sources of data, um, then you can do lots of interesting things with them. The simplest thing you can do is push them somewhere else. So you can take real-time data coming from a database using chain data capture and push that out onto Kafka or push that into blob storage in the cloud or push it into Hadoop. And we have customers that are doing this very simple type of integration where you're just going from one source and delivering into a, a totally different target or in certain cases with a number of customers to multiple targets at the same time with subsets of data going into uh, Kafka, into say Amazon Redshift, into Azure SQL DB, into Blob Storage, into Hadoop, all in a single data flow. You know, so those are the simplest things you can do, but pretty often you need to be able to manipulate the data before it lands somewhere. So that's where being able to do real-time processing of the data through SQL-based continuous queries and utilizing time windows really comes in useful. And the types of things that you can do with this are very varied, you know, so you can do basic stream processing where you can filter, transform, aggregate uh, the data in real time and also enrich it, load reference data into memory and join that in real time. But on top of that, you can do uh, more intelligence. So you can do things like anomaly detection, uh, correlation of data across multiple data streams. So joining data together based on some identifiers within the data to correlate it. And, and we have customers that are doing that with security data, for example, correlating data across uh, lots of different log files by say IP address to see if uh, multiple things are happening to that IP. Are the things happening within the antivirus log within the firewall, within the VPN, within the network routers that all point to this IP address behaving badly. 
And then pattern matching, which is complex event processing. You are looking for sequences of events over time that indicate something interesting. And so that's the type of processing that you can do with kind of streaming integration and, and analytics. You can also integrate with uh, machine learning software. So deliver pre-processed features into machine learning so that you can learn and then take the results of that uh, take the model that are built in your uh, third-party machine learning and promote those to real time to operationalize machine learning. So we have customers that are doing that today as well. On top of that, you need to be able to visualize the data to make it visible. Uh, so you can have dashboards. We have a built-in dashboard builder within the product, uh, generate alerts and uh, trigger external workflows. And the key thing here is to do all of it uh, in a real-time continuous and heterogeneous fashion uh, using an enterprise-grade platform that is inherently distributed, scalable, reliable, and secure. And talking of uh, integration, this is a bit of an eye chart, uh, but this represents the things we can work with. You know, so we have a large number of data collectors across lots of different technologies, uh, a lot of different ways you can deliver data, lots of different targets. And so the goal is to kind of make this easy to do by having a a drag and drop UI that you can build data flows very easily uh, and also enable you to get evaluated out of your data by visualizing it as well. So uh, that's you know, streaming integration with Stream. That's the platform in a nutshell. And from there, we can go on and kind of talk about some of the new innovations that we've added in uh, our latest release. So uh, as with uh, any release of our platform, we are kind of focusing on four major areas. One is kind of the enterprise greatness of the platform. So we're always continually improving performance of, of our software, getting more performance out of things we integrate with. And in this release, it was uh, focused on, a lot on Kafka and getting really high performance out of Kafka. Ease of integration, the broad support for different things that we can integrate with. The fact that we are an end-to-end -end platform, so always making us more end-to-end -end and adding additional capabilities that you might find in other software to kind of preclude the necessity to try, have to integrate with a lot of other things. And then uh, on the ease of use side, just generally make things even easier to use, uh, add additional features that kind of allow users to get value very, very quickly and improve the manageability of things. So if we start with Kafka, uh, we added uh, quite a few additional features uh, around Kafka that were kind of driven by experience with, with customers and some of the issues that the customers were facing. Around performance, the first thing we did was add uh, multi-threaded delivery. And, and basically that means that if you have a single uh, writer to Kafka, within that single writer, you can partition it in, it used to be a single thread, now it can be multiple threads uh, that are partitioned, that basically allow you to get more performance when you're writing to Kafka. And similarly, when you're reading from Kafka, we now do automatic mapping of partitions. And what that means is that if you have a single stream node and you're reading from a, a Kafka topic that has, say, eight partitions, um, that single node would read from all eight. But now if you add another stream node uh, to get more performance to scale out, it will automatically uh, map the partitions so that four will be read on one node and four on another. If you add another two stream nodes, then uh, you'll now have two partitions read on each node. And as you add them, as you remove them, that automatic mapping happens immediately. So you, you, you don't have to do a lot of additional configuration. You just add more stream nodes if you're not seeing the scalability that you need uh, when you're reading from Kafka. We recognize that you know, things don't always work out and you might have performance bottlenecks, uh, maybe even in your configuration of Kafka. Um, so we've added a lot of uh, monitoring metrics that enable you to pinpoint performance bottlenecks. Uh, so by looking at those metrics or sending the metrics to us and we can analyze them, we can tell people, well, you need to tweak your Kafka configuration in such a way in order to get the performance that you're looking for. And we are always continually adding uh, support for the, the latest Kafka releases as customers demand them. So once they uh, start to see them in production at customers, we will add release for those uh, additional releases. Uh, you know, uh, the API has changed a lot uh, prior to Kafka going GA. Um, I hope it won't change as much <laughs> when there is GA, but there's no guarantee there. And you know, the goal there is really to get 
high performance scalability and uh, optimized resources. And this is just a quick view of some of the screens around our kind of Kafka monitoring. So you can see a lot of the additional metrics that we're uh, gathering here. And we also expanded uh, things we deal with in the cloud. Uh, so we added uh, Amazon S3 Reader. We could already write to Amazon S3. We can now read from it in real time. So you can build solutions that utilize blob storage. Uh, you can also have multi-threaded delivery like with Kafka into Amazon S3. We also support uh, integration into Amazon Kinesis. Uh, if people are using Amazon Kinesis in the cloud, then we can uh, write into that as well. And we have direct integration into uh, Azure's HD Insight. Uh, offering. And uh, for those of you not aware, uh, HD Insight is the uh, kind of big data offering on Azure that includes Hadoop and Kafka and um, lots of nice things like that. So people are utilizing that uh, in the cloud and we now have direct integration into that through Azure configuration. And you know, it's always important to us to be able to support uh, the technologies our customers are using. And so we're, we will obviously be continually adding uh, new integrations as things become popular. Additional integration features include a, a data masking capability uh, that allows you to, in real time, uh, mask data, uh, pseudonymize it. And that's seeing some uptake in GDPR type of uh, projects. Uh, we support OPC UA, which is a IoT protocol. So that's an additional uh, source that we can read from. We previously supported MQTT and AMQP and TCP and things like that, but now we support OPC UA directly. We make deployment and, and delivery into MemSQL uh, even easier. Uh, so it's now a fully fledged target uh, within our platform. Uh, you could previously write to it using JDBC. Uh, now it's um, more optimized and tested, and so you can deliver it, uh, deliver data straight into MemSQL. And we also have log-based CDC capture from uh, MariaDB, um, in addition to uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and HP Nonstop. We've expanded the types of analysis you can do with new visualization capabilities. And these are some things that you see in kind of full-blown uh, visualization products. Um, so you can now, in addition to just looking at real-time data, you can now rewind and uh, set date ranges and look at data generated in the past. Um, you have very granular uh, filtering at a chart level and page level, so you can see exactly what you're looking for. And you can search across an entire dashboard and it goes back into the underlying store and does real-time searching and filtering on real-time data and also on the uh, rewinded data. It just makes it easier for people to work with the dashboards without having to get into the SQL queries that are kind of behind them. So when people develop the dashboards, they build visualizations that use SQL to talk to the uh, backend, uh, talk to our server. And now people can just search in the dashboard without having to even touch the SQL that someone else may have built. This is just kind of what it looks like. That's the rewind feature. Uh, this is the searching and filtering. We also allowed a, uh, if you look at the previous slide, you can see it's a kind of a dark dashboard. That was our inherent theme. Uh, we've added a light theme because some people like uh, white dashboards. And uh, also you can now embed stream dashboards directly in other pages. So there's a little a way of getting an embed tag that you can then put into your own uh, web pages. And so you can see our dashboards as part of your portals, for example. Uh, just a quick, uh, zoom through uh, some other new features. We now monitor uh, the data flow pipelines uh, in real time and highlight any areas that are backlogged. So to spot bottlenecks, to help you understand which uh, processes might benefit from scaling out, for example, if queries are taking a lot of time to process data, you may need to have, run them on multiple nodes in order to get more throughput. Uh, we've put in APIs that allow you to uh, create stream uh, applications and data flows and deploy them and do all that uh, without even using a command line or a, a, a UI. Uh, and that really allows you to kind of integrate into other solutions and for third parties to be able to build uh, stream process processing as part of uh, their platforms. We've incorporated uh, file lineage and management. So any of our sources and targets who work with files, we record uh, for every output file, we record the ranges of the source 
uh, data that was used to generate that file. So you can prove lineage of data. And it also gives you insight into file usage and storage um, so you can better manage things. And we also added in an additional windowing type. We already had the ability to do uh, time windows uh, that were either jumping, so you know, they would uh, fill up and then all the data would go into a query, that would process, then they would fill up again, you keep on doing that. And sliding windows where every time the window changed, the query would run and output new results. And uh, now we have session-based windows that are kind of akin to the way, say, your, your web session works where people come and go and they're usually there just for a short time. Uh, but you want to keep everything, you know, that time's kind of unknown and you want to keep everything they're doing together um, until they leave. Um, so session-based windows is akin to kind of real-life scenarios uh, where the window size is unpredictable, variable, and based on uh, some actions that the users are taking. We've enhanced our platform so you can now upgrade it without pausing or stopping applications that are running within Stream. And that allows our customers 24-7 uh, availability uh, because the Stream cluster can now be completely up and running even while you upgrade it to the latest version. We've improved the way the uh, load balancing happens within applications. So uh, the stream will now check the resources being used across stream nodes and uh, optimize the performance and kind of balance out where applications and processing are, are running if you have a, a stream cluster. We are certified uh, Docker now. So we have a, a Docker image that you can very easily get to and, and, and download. And also creating a stream cluster uh, in a Docker cluster uh, is you know, really simple now. Uh, so it really improves the productivity of people that are using us and Docker together. So that you know, increases the uh, different places we can be deployed. We already can be deployed you know, on servers through you know, various installs on you know, VMs in the cloud through Docker. We have AMIs uh, and Marketplace on AWS and we have images and uh, Marketplace entries on Azure as well. So it really kind of increases the way people can get to stream. And then finally, we have this ability to kind of preview data going in and out of continuous queries so you can debug them and kind of check that they're working and diagnose any issues. That's a very quick run through of uh, the stream platform and the new releases. This is kind of a summary of everything that I've just talked about. You know, so it really range from performance and scalability of the platform, making it even more enterprise grade, uh, more support for cloud and other uh, systems, uh, increasing the integration capabilities of the platform. This addition of uh, data exploration by being able to rewind the dashboard, uh, filter things at a chart and page level and search. And a usability side, uh, adding in all these different capabilities that you know from file lineage to data masking um, that really you know, make the platform more usable and if people want to kind of get started with stream you can go to our website click on free stream and download the product today um, and start testing it out it's really simple and easy to use so that's the end of my presentation any, <laughs> any questions well great thanks for that steve you know the, the question that came to mind when when you were setting this up uh, you have these two elements right you have the data integration and you have the real-time analytics uh, on the real-time side what happens if when one of those streams becomes stale uh does, does it does it break down the whole system or or how, how do you deal with that so i mean obviously the the data is only as up to date as the sources, right? right? So, I mean, what our customers will actually do is, um, on top of integration, you know, so there's a lot of our customers that are using us for integration, moving data from one place to another, correlating it, etc. Mm -hmm. They will actually build uh, small analytics applications, not to analyze the content of the data, but to analyze the data flows themselves, oh. and do things like. Uh, do a count of how much data is moving from one place to another, do some analysis on that, work out, say, a moving average, um, standard deviations, and then uh, trigger alerts if the data flow speed drops below, say, a standard deviation below the mean or something like that, right? So something very simple. And there are other use cases that are more complex than that where they're comparing current data rates with historical data rates and seeing if you know even 
taking into account um, daily fluctuations based on the hour of the day, day, day of the week, um, holidays, etc. Is my transaction rate looking normal? And with um, change data capture type of scenarios, they'll do that not just at a database level, but even at a table level, right? Are we seeing the normal amount of changes coming from this table? Has it suddenly increased way beyond what we normally expect, or has it suddenly dropped off to nothing? So building those types of analytics applications where you are monitoring the data flows um, is actually pretty common. And, and it does help you spot things like that if you know, a, a, any stream suddenly stops giving you data. Right, right. So, Steve, what does a, a typical customer engagement look like? You know, uh, say I'm a new customer, I, I tried it out. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of moving parts here. Is this more like a consultant kind of uh, role for Stream, or, or how do you go about it? It really depends a lot on the use case. Yeah. Uh, and I guess also on the confidence of the, uh, of the people doing the downloading. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had um, customers that downloaded the product, built uh, applications uh, as a way of justifying budget into real-time analytics. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's like they, they, the engineers were convinced this would be a great thing to be able to bring value to the company, but they couldn't get budget for it just by doing a PowerPoint. So they thought, well, why don't we just show some results and then get budget that way, mm -hmm. um, which is great. But then you know, other uh, customers do need um, more assistance in, in getting started. We do uh, you know, POCs with customers as necessary, you know, to kind of uh, proof of concept that you know, every, everything they want to do uh, with the platform, they can actually do. Um, and some of those are you know, very straightforward. Some are uh, more in-depth. It really depends on the sophistication of the customer. But in general, it is a platform that you can get up and running yourself pretty easily. Um, and what we have tried to do is embed more and more help within the product in order to guide people through things. So an example mm -hmm. is with you know, change data capture. When we first provided change data capture capabilities in the product, um, you would go into the data flow, you'd drag in a, uh, say, an Oracle CDC reader, and then you'd have to configure it, then you'd start it up and it would go wrong, and you'd have to try and work out what was going wrong, etc. In uh, one of our previous releases, we added in uh, wizards that step you through that process. And so now you start off with the wizard, you enter some connection information to the database, and if anything's wrong there, it'll tell you. And if it connects to the database and it say, sees that you don't have the right privileges, that uh, say with Oracle, supplemental logging is not turned on, so you can't do change data capture, you know, and other things that could go wrong. We'll check for all of those things and not only tell you if they're not going to work, but also what you can do to fix it. Um, and you know, obviously, all of that information is in the manual, but not everyone reads manuals. Right, right. Yeah, so by moving more and more stuff into uh, the wizards and the UI and helping people through the process, you don't completely eliminate the need for support and for engineers to go out and kind of help with uh, help customers uh, in all cases but you can allow customers to be a lot more self-sufficient um, and we have you know lots of samples lots of examples of, of you know, writing uh, stream processing through queries um, and I, I think the only real new thing to most people because most of the queries, they just look like SQL. So anyone that's familiar with SQL, they can do this, right? Yeah. Uh, but the, the only really new thing is is Windows. And you know, how, how do you best utilize time windows over data streams to get the, the value that you need? And so that can ha take a little bit of thought. Um, and so they might need some help there sometimes. But we've had customers that build full analytics apps on the platform without any help at all. And we first hear them hear from them uh, from support when they actually want to go ahead and buy it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, it, it can be easy to use if you have the right mindset. Right, right. Well, well Steve, I can't let you go without asking what's next. I mean, you, you mentioned AI, for example. I mean, where do you go beyond real time, right? Well, what's the next step? Well, the, you know, more and more things are becoming real time and there are always you know, new technologies to integrate with, right? That, that's the great thing about having a, uh, a streaming integration platform is there's no end of things that people want to integrate. You know, so a lot of the 
uh, you know, almost every release contains new sources, new targets. There's always new stuff that people want to work with. Um, machine learning is definitely becoming more and more important to customers. And you know, while we're not a machine learning platform, we, you know, right now can integrate with machine learning, especially from operationalizing it perspective. And we aim to make that even simpler uh, kind of down the road as well. You know, so um, you know, the key hot things that you know, people are talking about, you know, you have cloud adoption that's almost goes without saying, you know, almost everyone's doing that. IoT, we have solutions for IoT. That's something that we are seeing uh, more and more of as more industries start adopting IoT. Machine learning is something that, again, we're seeing a big uptick in as well. Um, and then there are newer technologies that we'll always, everyone will have to start thinking about things like blockchain and distributed ledgers that um, may uh, end up being becoming important as well. So, you know, as a you know, technology company, as an integration company, we always have to look at what technologies are being adopted, what technologies are likely to be adopted, and incorporate those into the platform while continually making it. Uh, more enterprise grade and uh, even easier to use. Well, great, Steve. You know, this has been fascinating. And uh, i really like to thank you once again for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure, Rich. <laughs> you bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data. <laughs>